morning. Praise the Lord, everybody. Shirley Caesar told us it's all right. It's okay. Don't let troubles get in your way. We extend the warmest of welcomes to everybody who's tuning in uh, here to New Life Church of God, Palmetto, Louisiana, as we proclaim the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Church today is different. Uh, we are abiding by the instructions from our government. Not that we don't have any faith. That's definitely not the reason for our just going online today and not gathering in person. Uh, we want to, God is up to something. And just because we can assemble ourselves together in one place doesn't mean that uh, God is not active. We want to be wise. We don't want to be overreactive. And uh, I believe our faith is still alive. Sometimes we feel that we can only be the church if we come together and sit in a building and everybody look uh, towards the front and look towards the message. What is God saying to us today? We can't assemble ourselves. Does that keep us from being the church? Is the church really about us coming into a building? New Life, you know I tell you all the time, when we have our benediction, we dismiss you to go and to be the church. So this is an opportunity to be the church in, in a very real way. The coronavirus, this epidemic, this pandemic that's going on in our world every day, changes have been made, announcements have been made. We're trying to flatten that curve as quickly as we can. We can definitely indeed pray that that curve will be flattened quickly, but just being responsible, we can be about that and we can understand our role in, uh, in making sure that uh, uh, this pandemic is um, uh, squashed ASAP as soon as possible. And so when we can understand that and do our part with that. But today, just want to share a message with you, uh, even as we deal with the realities of today, God is still with us. God is still alive. And I just want to share a word with us today as we gather in the places that we are. And, um, you know, things have changed. This past week, I went into a state office. And uh, as I entered, there were three nurses that uh, met me there. Uh, the first nurse asked me a series of questions about where I've traveled to, where I've been. Uh, the next nurse put a thermometer in my mouth and took my temperature to uh, make sure that I wasn't running a fever. I really wanted my blood pressure checked, but uh, they didn't have a blood pressure cup. But even afterwards, I received um, a little arm band uh, to let everybody in the building know that uh, I had been cleared to be in that building. There were some physical things that uh, those employees wanted to know to give me the rite of passage into that office, into every department that was there, into every resource that was available. But I first had to ensure that physically I was able to do that. Friends, as many of us have to stay home as much as we can, uh, as many of us are kind of checking our bodies, checking to make sure we're not running a fever, uh, making sure that our cough is uh, at the very most something from uh, allergies that we may have, just wanting to be careful, wanting to be certain about that. Um, you know, it, it, it causes me to think uh, we check ourselves so much physically. Today, I just wanted to pause and challenge us in these down times. We can do some spiritual checkups that gives us the rite of passage to, um, to life. Just like I needed a rite of passage into that particular office building. When we can take seriously our spiritual challenge into what we need to be doing spiritually. You know, um, we have the tendency to say that uh, you can't judge me spiritually. God knows me. And there are so much liberties that we give ourselves. Keep your distance from judging me spiritually. But physically, there are certain checks that we have to check off, certain boxes that have to be checked physically to say that we are okay. 
we want to be able to go to our doctors and and uh, you know they check all of our pressures we go do lab work and that lab work involves a lot of making sure physically we are right but spiritually don't judge me I'm so glad we have the Word of God I'm so glad that we have the promise of the Holy Spirit to help us in our spiritual checks in our spiritual health friends I share with you again God is up to something and uh, if we can tune in and making sure spiritually that uh, we have done some things to uh, uh, to ensure that we can really chase after him, to ensure that we can kind of check what God is doing or God is up to something. None of this has caught God off guard. And so we can sit back with our own attitudes and our own questioning and doubt God, or we can want to chase after God do some things to, to chase after him. And so I challenge us to do kind of an inside check in what's going on um, in our lives and in our hearts. We do offer Jesus Christ and we understand that the newness of life that he brings uh, is a daily walk. We can't walk this walk one time to say that we have checked the boxes of, I'm a member of such and such church. I've been baptized. I've been filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, I pay my tithes, I pay my offerings, all these things that we can check off. But how, how is our health spiritually? That's my challenge as we even have some downtime to chase after God in uh, some things that, that we could be doing. There's a text of scripture from Paul's second letter to the church at Corinth. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, that last book of that particular letter that the apostle uh, Paul uh, shares. And uh, the church there was beginning to question the apostle Paul. They began to look at checking their own boxes about, you know, did you really say this? Is your life really doing this? Are you really authentic in being an apostle and, and, and uh, what you have? Um, and, and they were kind of going through this. And the Apostle Paul says, hold it, hold it. Check my life out, if you will. And then he kind of flips the script on them, verses 5 and 6 there in 2 Corinthians chapter 13. And the Apostle Paul says, examine yourselves to, to see whether or not that you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. That sixth verse. And I trust that you will discover that you have not failed the test. My brothers and sisters, may I suggest to you that we are in the midst of a test. And it's not just a test for one or two. This is a test for the whole world. Seven billion people are under this test. And uh, a test doesn't come to cause us to fail. A test comes to reveal what's in us, reveal where we are in our lives. And so I challenge you to walk along with me, even as I'm called to examine myself, to see if I am in the faith. We can say how much we love Jesus. We can say, oh, I just love him. I worship him. But when we go through a test, where has our faith been? Has our faith been informed? See, sometimes our faith, uh, we say some things in faith and we live so haphazardly. Let me just break it down like this. We live dumb, making dumb choices, all behind God. I'm a believer. I don't have to do this. I don't have to listen to that. Just challenge us where we are in this faith walk indeed. We seek after spiritual health. That's the challenge that goes before us. Not just church health. A lot of us are missing our fellowship, our church fellowship today. I just want to push us even a little bit further into our spiritual health. When the church around us is no longer there, when we can't fellowship with our small group classes, when those who normally sit around us in the places that we sit, when we can't meet with them, we miss the church. What about spiritually? What is missing in our lives spiritually in our walk with the Lord Jesus Christ? Spiritual health begins and ends at what's in our core, what's in our center. 
And so when we talk about our spiritual health and our core, and we want Jesus Christ to be the center of our lives indeed. And as we go through this test, as we try to identify where we are, we want to understand that so much of our lives is about our spirituality, our spiritual beings, how you treat your enemy. That's about a spiritual life. How you treat your spouse, your spouse, that's a spiritual life. How you deal with your children, that's spiritual. How you pay your bills, that's spiritual. How you perform your work responsibilities, that's spiritual. And so even for our children, how you do your schoolwork, how you do your academic work, May I suggest to you that that's spiritual. And so what the Apostle Paul is making clear in our text of scripture today as he references that, he says, test yourselves in all of this. Test yourselves. As long as you are away from your home for certain hours of the day, you are all right. But now that you have to be at your home all day long, test yourself. How, how awesome is your God when your children are making all the noise? How awesome is, is your God when you are confined to certain areas? Spiritual health, I suggest. The Apostle Paul asked the questions, have you passed the test? Did you realize that Jesus Christ is really in you to be a more loving mother, to be a patient father, to be a diligent student? All of this is about spiritual health, I suggest to you. The test is right here before us. There's some issues and areas even in my life through this testing stage, however long it'll be. We're at least a week deep into this testing stage. Some things have been revealed about me that I need to take note of and to use this time uh, to strengthen my spiritual health. And I want to challenge all of us to look to that, to know that we deal with all this stuff every day. Our spiritual health is just not identified in coming together and meeting one another as a church, even as I'm gathered here in the sanctuary and the pews are empty. Spiritual health is about how we live when the pews are empty. But you know what, my friends? The Lord is here to help us. Again, Apostle Paul says that we can discover some things about our lives. We can discover the fruit of our lives, that we can bear fruit indeed, that we can really identify what's real, what's true, what's there. And so even as we offer Jesus Christ unto you, recognizing that as we welcome him into our lives, Lord Jesus, come into reign in my life. Be my, the one that forgives me. Save me from the consequences of sin, from my nature of sin. Fill me with your Holy Spirit, empowering me, strengthening me that I can go through whatever storm, whatever test. We, we offer Christ unto you. It's a simple thing to give your lives to Christ. Simple thing to become a believer, not just a church member, not just opening the doors to the church, but opening the doors to Jesus Christ and the fullness of life that he gives unto us. My brothers and sisters, let Jesus be your center. Let him be the core of your life. As a kid, we didn't play with games on our phones. There was a game, there was a toy that was a top, kind of odd shaping and a ball point at the end and you would spin it and the top would spin round and round and round. And when you began to spin that top, it would wobble. It would wobble. But with all the forces that were distanced, you know, we, 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 our, our strength kind of forced it to wobble. But eventually that wobbling would come into a perfect spinning of that top. And so what was happening immediately is that there were some unequal forces that were coming against that top that caused it not to spin perfectly. In our lives, there's some things that causes us to wobble as that top was wobbling. 
But when the center of our lives are perfect, <laughs> just like the center of that top is perfect, eventually that top will be, be, begin to uh, find uh, that perfect flow that it was created with to spin perfectly because that top recognized that its creator had created it to spin in such a perfect manner. The Lord Jesus Christ has created us to spin and to come out of wobbling seasons in our lives, not to fall down and to say, that's it. That's what Jesus Christ does for us. That's what spiritual health will begin to identify in our lives. Friends, I wanna pray with you today as we come to a close. May the Lord strengthen you as you raise your family. May the Lord strengthen you as you deal with financial pressures. May the Lord strengthen you as you deal with even health issues. May the Lord strengthen you as we deal with being community. May God be with us. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord God, for those under the sound of my voice. Thank you, Jesus, that you love them in such a special way. And I ask that you would meet the needs of the lives of my brothers and sisters as we're not running from this test we're not ignoring the fact that it is a test even for believers it's a test I pray that believers would uh, see that spiritual health can be strengthened in so many ways oh God may we exercise the spiritual disciplines that you've given us absent the church absent meeting together as a body of Christ. The lessons that we've learned, the messages that we've heard, the classes that we've been in, may we not just be hearers of your word now, but may we engage in doing your word in a very real way. For those that are exercising and moving in fear today, Lord, I pray that they may reach out for you. You have loved the world so much that you sent Jesus Christ that we may accept and to receive him into our lives as our Lord, as our Savior, as our guide, and our light. I speak light. May we be salt and light into our world, making a difference. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May the Lord bless you, friends. We're going to go through this together. We come under a prayer covering, and uh, the Lord is going to be with us to strengthen us as we deal with whatever comes our way today. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us choose to rejoice and be glad in this day. The Lord bless you. Until next time, my friends. Amen.